Welcome back folks for a new episode of Leaked. Today we'll cover the VK-101P, also known as the Mammut or Mammoth. So this super heavy tank was designed in 1942 and it's the precursor to the Mouse. Now during May of that year, Hitler wanted a super heavy tank that weighed 100 tons and able to carry a larger caliber gun than the 88mm L71. So by June of that year, Porsche came up with this design called the Type 205. It is the initial stages of the mouse, and they call it the Mammut. By December of that year, they fixed the design, so fixed the turret as well as the hull, and named it the Moishin or the Mouse Chin. And by February of 1943, the whole project was renamed to the mouse. So the Mammut is actually a prototype in the developing of the mouse, in a nutshell. So this tank is somewhat smaller than the mouse, but not that much, as you can see here, based on the silhouette. This tank was designed to carry 128 or 150 millimeter gun, and currently it's in a debacle at tier 8 or tier 9, because they want to place it at tier 9 with a 150 millimeter gun, but the armor is not that thick, only 120 millimeters at the front. So they decided to shift to tier 8 with 128 millimeter gun, but it's not the replacement for the Lerve or the Lion. So this tank is currently in limbo based on where this tank should be, whether as a premium, the VK4502A replacement, or maybe the Moishin replacement for the VK4502B at tier 9. So this tank is in limbo and they don't know where to fit it because the armor and the gun doesn't match per tier. And here are the collision models as well as renders of the Mammoth. Now this vehicle is very curvy. As you can see, the turret is rounded. The ass end of the hull armor is also rounded. So this tank is very smooth looking. Why do you need space armor covering up the engine deck or the rear end of this vehicle? That's kind of weird. You see that? That's space armor covering up the ass end. Huh. The top of the roof on the turret is mosaic. It's not one plate, is it? Looks like it's welded. Usually you have a cast turret that they produce one cast for the side of the turret and then one plate for the top. But in this case, it looks like multiple plates and it's zigzaggy. So that's kind of interesting. As you can see, the frontal armor is only about 120-ish millimeters for the frontal plate. This will be effective up to 200 millimeters or so. So you can bounce a few shots at tier 8, but not tier 10 and tier 9 guns from like 150 millimeter calibers or above or some 120 ish or above so the frontal plate is all right but the lower plate is the weakness so like all tigers and e75s the lower plate is the main weakness now the turret is pretty strong it's about 210 millimeters rounded so this is likely auto bounce it has a very decent sized mantlet but the cupola is the weak spot so this commander hatch cupola is rounded, but it's only 200 millimeters. So you have to hit it square on to penetrate. Otherwise, it's a bounce if you hit the sides. This is the main weak spot other than the hull armor. Side armor, you do have side skirts to cover up some of the tracks, but it's 120 millimeters. So it's not as good as 140-ish or 150-ish. That's on the KV-4. So it's decent to go side scraping, the same as the E-75 but it's relatively decent. Here is the ass armor. What is most interesting about this tank is this side skirt covering up the ass end. Why do they need that? Is it to prevent like artillery shells from hitting the engine deck and causing fire? But it's not covering up the top. It's only covering up the ass end. So is it to protect against like rifles, like anti-material rifles? I know people were shooting it at tanks to knock out the engines and the reason why they put like side skirts and separate plating metal plating on the Panzer 4s or Panzer 3s is because of the anti-material rifles it's not because it can bounce tank shells tank shells will just go straight through whereas they could bounce like devalue the anti-material rifles so it's covering up the ass end for some reason that's kind of interesting but here are the main stats for the mammoth so this is the most recent version. 
they place it at tier 8. Whereas older version, they have it at tier 9 with a 150mm gun. So they decided that was not the good version, I guess, but... Alright, we'll go with a tier 8 version. So it has 1650 health, which is quite chunky for a tier 8 heavy. Engine power is 1000, weighs 120 tons. So power to weight ratio is only 8.3, which is kind of slow, but... If you're going to compare it with the likes of, you know, the OI 120, it's faster because that vehicle has like 7 horsepower per ton ratio. So this vehicle is slightly faster. Slightly. Top speed is only 20 kilometers per hour. So it feels like a Black Prince. Yeah, it's slow. Reverse is 15. So it's almost the same. Hull Traverse is 18 degrees per second. Wow, that's slow. Turret Traverse is 21 degrees per second. It's better, but it's slow too. So this thing is a bunker. It's a German version of a Japanese heavy tank. <laughs> Terrain resistance is 0.76 for hard, 0.95 for medium, and 2.1 for soft. It has above average hard and medium terrain resistance and average soft stats. So that's fair. View range is 370 meters, which is below average, I believe. Radio range is standard, above 700. Hull armor is 140 at the front. Alright, I mistake. My mistake. It's 140, not 120. So with this armor, the Tiger II has 150 millimeters at the front, but that thing can only bounce like 210 millimeters or below. So the hull armor is good at tier 8, top tier, but it's not going to stand up to tier 9 and tier 10. So it's decent armor. 120 at the sides, so it's like a E75, and 80 at the rear. Turret armor is 210 at the front, 120 at the sides, rounded, and 80 at the rear. So the armor protection is pretty good. It has 128mm gun with 210mm of penetration and almost 500 damage per shot. That's the highest alpha of tier 8 heavy tank. The second highest is the T-34 with 400 damage on that 120mm. So that's very good, the highest alpha. Penetration wise, it has above average penetration. The average penetration is about 200 or so, I believe. So that's very good. Rate of fire is 3.5 rounds per minute with gun rammer and vents that could go up to about 4 rounds. And DPM is about 2000 with the gun rammer and vents, which is quite low. So this is an even slower rate of fire than the Lerve or the Lion. Reloads every 17.26 seconds or 16 and a half with gun rammer and vents. Very slow to fire. Accuracy is 0 0.38, which is average. Aim time is 2.88 seconds, which is quite long, above average. Gun depression is 8 degrees, which is very good, so you can use the turret to the maximum value. And 30 degrees of gun elevation, that's quite high. So this thing looks like an even slower version of a Lerve, the Lion. It has a slower firing gun, but the highest alpha of all tier 8 heavy tanks. So that's the trade-off. It's more suited to be a Japanese heavy tank, like a bunker. This thing is a bunker. Apparently it's German though. Now let's compare the Mammoth to the Tiger II. The Mammoth has 10 less millimeters for the frontal plate than the Tiger. So that kind of sucks, but it's a small price to pay because the side armor is way better. It's 120 millimeters with side skirts than the 80 millimeters that's on the Tiger. So the side armor is way better for side scraping. And the turret is thicker with 210 millimeters rounded as opposed to the flat 185 so the turret is not as strong on the tiger but you do have a cupola weak spot for the mammoth so the armor is in generally better on the mammoth now let's compare the mobility so the mammoth should be a bunker of a tank whereas the tiger is more flexible the mammoth has 50 more health than the tiger too and above average by 100 hit points so it has a lot of health However, the power to weight ratio is way below average by almost 4, actually 4.3 
horsepower per ton ratio. So this thing is very slow. Top speed is half of the average, only 20 kilometers per hour, whereas the average is 39.1. That's crazy slow. Hull traverse is below average by 7.7 .7 degrees per second. So it feels like you're turning around Tail Bore 6 turret. Yeah, it's slow. Turret traverse is below average by uh, five-ish degrees per second so this thing is slow to turn however you do have very good above average terrain resistance so this thing has 0.76 as opposed to 1.1 for the average on hard above average on medium and above average on soft so very good traverse for going through swampy grounds but it's very slow so it doesn't feel like it I guess it has below average view range by 3 meters so that sucks but you're a bunker so take the hits radio range is above average so it's standard for high tiers no question let's compare the gun and dpm so it's a very big caliber gun and fires pretty slowly the penetration is slightly above average so that's good it's not like the D25T, 170-ish millimeters of penetration on the Russian derpy guns. Yeah, it's way better than that. Damage for the Alpha is very high. Almost 500 as opposed to the average, which is 330. So, very chunky health. But the DPM is below average because the gun reloads quite long. So, that's a trade-off. You're trading reload time and... DPM for a very big alpha. Is that worth? Might be. Accuracy is not as good as a Tiger 2, but it's on average, so that's fair, I guess. Gun depression is 8 degrees, which is very good. So in generally, this tank is a bunker. It's like a Japanese heavy tank, and it has a lot of armor for the side armor as well as the turret but don't overestimate the armor because 140 millimeters slope upwards at about 40-ish degrees is not as thick and tier 9 and tier 10 guns will easily penetrate and the final opinion about the mammoth is that this vehicle is a bunker of sorts but it's no japanese heavy tank because you cannot abuse and overestimate the frontal plate of this vehicle it's only 140 millimeters thick, and any guns with 250 millimeters of penetration will easily go through it. So the frontal plate is not as thick, and you cannot just go sitting in the open field, and your opponents have no way of penetrating, like Japanese heavy tanks, unless they use gold. So the frontal protection is not as good, but you do have better than average side armor and turret armor. So you do have to use your brain and play with side scraping and haul down tactics in mind. But in general, this tank is not that bad. It's slow, but it packs a punch and it bites back. So you have to play this tank like an E100 in mind. Know how you play bunkers like those tanks. Take it slow, take corners, take key positions, and prevent your enemies from advancing forwards. So that's how you play these bunker sort of heavy tanks. It's not the same as playing a M103 or Conqueror, obviously. Now currently, the Mammoth is stuck in limbo because they don't know where to fit this vehicle. As a premium tier 8, as a special Clan Wars reward, or as the replacement for the VK4502A at tier 8, or B version at tier 9. So they have been switching around the cannons from 128mm to 150 and switching around the engine power, but yeah, this tank is dead in the water, so to speak. So what if it's a premium tier 8 German heavy tank? Is it worth the money if it's like 10,000 gold? Well, it's directly in competition with the Lerve, the Lion. So this tank is slower, has a bigger bite, but less DPM. So that's the main trade-off and probably will have normal matchmaking so you can see up to tier 10s but eh, it's slow so if you're used to playing with the e100 or the mouse this will feel right at home but yeah it's not that bad of a vehicle it's just it's a little bit slow the main reason is the 20 kilometers per hour top speed and the traverse but 
it is a bunker of sorts and it could use a little bit more hull armor but that would just go beyond the historical accuracy I guess so eh, it's all right it's fair it's decent compared to the larvae now if you can compare it to stuff like the T-34s or IS-6 those are out the those are not bunker like heavy tanks this is a pure bunker heavy tank so there's no premium tier 8 that's like a bunker tank other than the KV-5 but the KV-5 has less of a bite because the gun is not as big so that's the main difference but thank you guys for watching this video hope you guys enjoy it i'll see you guys next time peace Who's your